it was the first time we'd ever been to like a record store and like there was a crowd waiting for us and it was just totally trippy we were like you know these mexican kids from rosemead and we're like signing autographs for like british kids who were like totally geeking out on us Being behind the kit, you know, just looking back at the crowd and, and and thinking, wow, you know, here we are in another country, in Japan. These kids have audio karate shirts on and hats on, and they're sitting there waiting for us to go on. Was uh, was surreal. So Audio Karate formed really in uh, would be freshman year of high school at Rosemead High, so that would have been like 94, 95. So we started to play together and kind of develop this, uh, I guess a band, it was a two-man a two, a two band which we later kind of evolved and we met Art and Art kind of put it all together for us and, and he always thought differently in terms of music and you know, uh, so when he joined the band is when it kind of took on a whole another feeling for us and we started to kind of do things on a more serious uh, path. So I met Joe from uh, Kung Fu Records. Um, actually, the way that we got signed is I met uh, Chris Rowe at an Atari show, and I gave him this crappy little demo. I don't even think it had a band name on it. I think it just had my email and a telephone number. And then I came home, I think a week or two later, to a voicemail from Joe. And I knew immediately who it was, because I knew of the Vandals. And he said he was interested in the band, and that sort of started everything. Uh, it, it, it really was like a dream for us when we uh, heard back from Joe uh, from Kung Fu Records. You know, I, I wasn't at that show. I was at home, and, and, and you know, we would practice and play those shows here and there. And then the next thing I heard is like, hey, uh, Joe from Kung Fu Records has our record, and, and he likes it. He wants to talk to us. And that was like, what? You know, I'm sorry, did you say what I think you said? Can, can, you, can you repeat that? There was a band, No Knife, which was on Time Bomb Recordings. Really good math rock emo band. Uh, Mark Nervino did some of the early records, fucking phenomenal. And they described their music as audio karate. And we thought that was really cool. And uh, Joe from Kung Fu didn't like the name of the Goons because I think there was some band in the Midwest or something like that that already had that name. So we said, uh, we did one show as Rosemead and Joe liked it and then we thought it was stupid. So then we came up with audio karate and we stole that from No Knife. And well, we didn't steal it, we asked permission which is what you should do when you try to steal somebody's in. But they never responded, so they may <laughs> never have even gotten the question. The first time he came to see us was at Chain Reaction, and he came with his wife, and I didn't tell any of the band that they were gonna be there, because I was so nervous, and I knew that if I told them, they would get super nervous, so they had no idea that Joe from the Vandals and Kung Fu Records was there to scout us. And we weren't that good that night at Chain Reaction. We were like bad. This was before they were like miking stuff, so it was a really just a shitty sound. And in my opinion, we bombed. And when I looked out after the show, he had left. And I thought, we just ruined our only shot to like get signed. I called him the next day to apologize. And he's like, don't worry, like I've seen everything I need to see. Like, I want to sign you guys. You know, we started off at places like the Showcase Theater and uh, Chain Reaction. And then, you know, from there we got into the Glass House in Pomona, California. Yeah, so our first real show that wasn't in a backyard where we were mic'd up and we had proper monitors and house sound was 2001 at the Glass House. I think it might have even been Cinco de Mayo because I remember they had a, a piñata up. And we were really, really, really rough. Like, really rough. But uh, Joe was supportive, and half the crowd was Latino. So I think they liked us based solely on the fact that they saw art, and he's like, hey, this dude's Mexican, and the rest of the band's Mexican, and we like these guys, so. So our album, Space Camp, was recorded in December of 2001 at West Beach Studios in Hollywood. It was uh, produced by Trevor Keith uh, from Face to Face. <laughs> Um, yeah, working with him was a, a pretty unique experience. It was the first time we'd ever worked with like a producer, uh, someone who had kind of a, something to say about our music and how to structure it. Um, yeah, it was a super fun process. That, that studio had a lot of great records there. I think uh, Smash from um, Offspring was done there, Rancid record was done there. 
Um, so yeah, just working with him and having our first real live studio record producer experience was super surreal and uh, a lot of fun. Single for Space Camp was Nintendo 89. It was, um, we shot the video at, um, where we rehearsed in Stormore, which is in Rosemead, California. Um, Joe Escalante from, from Kung Fu shot the video, he directed it. Um, I remember we had all our, like, our girlfriends in the audience, they were like front row, so if you look, you'll see all our like 18 year old girlfriends, which is kind of weird. Um, and uh, to the left, there was this girl, and Joe noticed her, and he's like, who's that girl? And I'm like, I don't know. And it turned out to be um, Vanessa, who's now like a really good friend of ours, and ended up being the girl in the Nintendo 89 video, who a lot of people mistaken for Shannon Elizabeth from um, American Pie. Uh, I never saw the resemblance, but yeah. Nintendo 89 was uh, was really a, a big song for us. Um, it you know got a lot of airplay. Uh, I would be home watching MTV and uh, you know be watching the show like Cribs, and it, you know lo and behold at the end of the song is is uh, Nintendo you know playing in in the background, and so I I did get up and you know call the guys, hey man you know put it on MTV and, and you know they would ignore my calls and I'd be all sad, but no. Um, Nintendo 89 ended up being what we would close our shows with in touring in support of. You know, that song alone ended up being uh, an anthem for uh, um, Audio Karate. You know, it was a song that, you know, got a lot of attention. Uh, uh, we, we talked about the compilations and being on various CDs and, you know, you don't appreciate it until now when CDs are, are going out of style and, and, you know, there's rarely CDs that are bought these days, and everything's downloaded, and everything's social media, and so uh, just knowing that Nintendo 89 played a large part in some of these, you know, big comps. The experience of Nintendo 89 and sort of the mileage that we got out of it, seeing it on comps like Cinema Beer Buddies, and of course all the Kung Fu Records comps. Yeah, like as a kid, that's how I got into punk bands was compilations like the Fat Records comps and the, just like numerous compilations. So it was cool. That to, to experience that too, to have fans or people get into us from these compilations that were coming out that had that song on it. The fat Comps is how I, I found out about all the bands that we were listening to growing up in high school. Because you were cheap and they were two bucks. <laughs> you get them over at the mall, you're just giving them away almost. There used to be a place called Tower Records and you could buy comps. But yeah, the punk rama comps uh, that Epitaph was putting out, the Fat Records comps, um, the Hopeless comps were, were awesome. So yeah, so coming back uh, with releasing Space Camp again is just, it's funny because we're I'm, we're all looking back kind of on, on those days when we were just kids and like, you know, we're adults now, like we've got mortgages and we're like, it's just crazy to look back on all those days and um, yeah, in a way it, it, I'm kind of more appreciative of it now than I've ever been in my whole life. Um, to be that young and have those kinds of experiences on the back of this record was phenomenal. I mean, it was huge, and it's really cool to be doing the vinyl now and to do the re-release and to be able to relive some of these moments with, with the guys. It's really cool. Uh, to have it on vinyl is going to be something that I'm really excited about because uh, it almost completes the journey for us uh, in terms of everything that we've been through. So really excited about the uh, Space Camp album coming out on vinyl.